I'm Joan Bakewell. I'm president of Birkbeck. I'm also a broadcaster, a writer, and a member of the House of Lords. When I was young, there was no such thing as gender equality. Men ruled the world, they had all the jobs, they did all the recruiting, and you were expected as a girl to be in a secondary position. So there was no sense of gender equality. However, I grew up in the 40s and 50s, so the echo of the suffragettes, indeed their presence, was uh, very, very strong in my lifetime. So, of course, I grew up knowing that women would have a struggle. So that's how it dawned on me as I grew as a young girl. As a young girl, I decided that I either wanted to be male because they had a much better life, or I wanted to be a nun because they cut out early. So um, it was very confusing, and it was a very big issue inside my own head. It wasn't an issue outside in the world because my father went to work every day and my mother stayed at home and was a housewife. So there was no gender equality. There was, in fact, m emotional equality, which is a very important component of, of domestic life. So that I wouldn't say that my mother felt my father was superior, he just had a job and she did not. I think it's very important to draw the distinction between the humanity of each of us and the actual job potential and career potential of each of us. Of course, I grew up in a world in which we were beginning to change things. The suffragettes had gone before, and we were, I was at a woman's only college in Newnham, where no women were allowed in the union and no women were allowed in the footlights. There were only two women's colleges. All the rest, 12 colleges, were male. So I had a great sense that there was a big struggle ahead and that it mattered if we were to get some change in the world. Now, the change in the world matters because since the 1880s, probably even earlier, but in the 1880s, which was when female education was founded in this country, we've been part of a global change, which will probably take something like 200 years, and of which each generation is a part, and which each generation reinterprets in terms of its own um, circumstances and opportunities and the prevailing ethics uh, and financial and economic circumstances of the time. So in my day, it meant getting onto a ladder for a career and holding on to that career and having equal opportunity for promotion. I didn't keep that pattern at all. I, my pattern was much more like the present day one in which young people have no security and they move from job to job. They very often have a portfolio of jobs in the course of their career and I did that for inner reasons, for emotional reasons, because I didn't like the idea of a ladder, a scrabble of ambition, of competition, and the idea that you only triumphed and you only had any worth when you got to the top. I didn't live like that. I lived a life of a freelance in which I chose the work I wanted to do. I was fortunate because in my generation there was opportunity. There was full employment, television was expanding, there were huge opportunities in, in television, print journalism, magazines. Nobody who wanted a job and could do it went without. It's not like that now. So each generation forges its own pattern of gender equality in terms of its own, own circumstances. I think it's very important for an institution as prestigious as Birkbeck to set the standard. So I think a good deal of thought is given at all times to ways in which gender equality can be pr promoted. And indeed transgender equality, we're now having a whole uh, generation change in which gender is becoming fluid and we have to be ready for that too and I don't think we should neglect it. The point is to make everyone feel that they have, and the evidence is there, that they have as many opportunities to fulfil their own potential as they can. And I think that needs to be addressed on all sorts of levels. Opportunities to take particular courses um, in administration, opportunities to sit on committees to make your voice heard. And I think one needs to be attentive also to people who feel that they're not getting that and wish to complain. So there needs to be a complaints pattern which sets out a very clear and transparent way of dealing with people who feel, no, I'm not getting a good deal here. I think we should strive at every level to make that so and to include other people, people within the college, the students as well as the staff, on um, a 
path of changing it and staying up to date.